сега предстои частта, в която ще можете да питате тези всички неща, които ви се въртят главата или поне тези, за които ще не стигне половин час. А, моята роля ще бъде на модератор и хората, които а, ще ви помагат, ще помоля да задавате въпросите на микрофон заради превода. И а, заповядайте, моля, който има въпрос, коментар, спонтанна реакция, моля да я сподели. Uh, hello, my name is Anita Stanova. Uh, I have a question to yours. So, thanks both of you. It was really inspiring. <laughs> um, so, yours, you said that uh, uh, the nurses, they are self-disciplined so that uh, uh, they, they are eligible to provide a high quality of services. Um, do you Do you believe that this is possible everywhere or it is a matter of uh, specific culture? <laughs> no, I think it's, uh, it's possible everywhere. I think uh, um, certainly when you choose for a certain profession, I think you're intrinsic motivated to do so. So if you're a teacher or a policeman or a banker or whatever, I see that um, people want to enjoy their work and they want to do it as good as possible, I think. But uh, usually um, what I see is that in the environment you create around it influences the behavior. So when you create um, hierarchy, then people will feel more and more depending on the management. So the more, the more protocols, the more procedures you have, the more depending behavior you will see. So if you change the context, so if you say we want responsible people who are responsible for what they're doing, then you have to give them the responsibility. So if you give, give people responsibility, they will behave responsible. So that's what I, so it's, it's, I think it's psychological and sociological. There are some, I think, some things, and you see it in, in, in like, uh, the talk um, uh, just, we just heard that um, I worked for four years in the Ukraine, and I saw how communism um, influenced the behavior, and how everybody was watching, waiting for Kiev, uh, and before that for Moscow, <laughs> for policy. And that's the same way it works in organizations, I think. So the more focus you have on strategy, mission, vision, management, the more depending people will behave. If the starting point is your service, and the starting point is your client, and the one who is delivering the service is the most important uh, one who, um, who can decide about quality, so that's, that's my view. Nurses, the, the way they act creates quality. So they are the most important ones, also if in the relation to their patients and their networks, to deliver good quality and also to, to um, create a network where new patients will come. So they're also the sales managers, if you uh, translate it in these kind of terms. So I think, yes, it, it depends on, on it's, it's, um, you can create a culture where this behavior is normal. And I think it's normal behavior. It's the way you act at home. If you have a family, you want your family to be happy and you do all the things which are necessary to, to do so, I think. I hope. <laughs> is that in the pronounce? Yeah? Okay. Uh, I have a question for Jos too. Uh, you mentioned you started with four nurses at the beginning. How did you start? Did you have like uh, funding or did you fund it yourself at the beginning? On the first years when yeah. you started, you mentioned you were only four nurses in yeah. a team. Did you start working? Did you have external funding or you funded it yourself? Like 
the, from the business side. Yeah, yeah, from the business. Side. No, um, before I start started working with these four nurses, I um, tried to apply the concept in other organizations. I worked as a more or less as a consultant, and I worked for some of the biggest home care organizations, and they funded me indirectly. So I said we became their biggest competitor. <laughs> so I still am very grateful that we were supported by our competitors. Um, when we started, from the start we had contracts with the health insurers. So the funding for what the nurses were doing <coughs> was coming from the health insurance. So we didn't, we didn't need any investments just for starting up and all the necessary things but that was not about big money. So we, we said, we, if we can avoid uh, investors, if, if we can avoid uh, loans of banks, then we can grow based on the responsibility that the nurses feel for the results. So from the first year, we had a positive result. Мои въпроси към двамата, ако в средата, в която работите, се появи по-добър, по-добър а, менеджер от а, вас, човек по-масштабен, който ще направи повече за организацията, готови ли сте вие да поделите с него властта си или даже да направите крачка на страни и назад? Do you want to answer first? Аз ще бъда много щастлив и за мен това ще бъде радостно събитие отколкото въобще да му мисля дали бих разделял власт и да, мен това би ме зарадвало. <съща> да? Отговор ми е да. Yes, for me it's a bit different. <laughs> No, I'm, uh, I just had a weekend, uh, last weekend, with uh, the coaches. And we had a discussion on, um, uh, do we need uh, any manager? Do you need me? So it was uh, said, because I'm um, more and more doing things in, in um, um, other countries. Um, I'm focusing on innovation, doing other things. I'm, I'm working part-time now. Um, so, do we need um, someone to replace me, uh, or do you want to take roles which make it not necessary? So, so we have um, these 19 coaches, and some of them already do different, have different roles besides being a coach. So we said, the, the, in 10 years, the skills of these coaches have grown, and some of them can do things which I did before. So, um, so I think um, I would like to have an organization without any management. So to show that it can work. And the coming five years, one of my tasks, as I see it, is to move away very slowly <laughs> so that nobody notices that I'm not there anymore. <laughs> And that all, everything just goes on. So that's what I... Like yeah. yeah, hello. Um, thank you for everything you've shared so far. Um, I can take my earpiece off because I can understand myself. Um, I'm working on a teal inspired startup social venture. Um, by the way, we're looking for a software developer and a startup <laughs> grant funding. Just thought I'd chuck that in there. I'm interested in um, how organizations might transition into these 
radical ways of working that I think we all hope will become mainstream and more ordinary. Um, I'm interested in what you guys think about what context that transition from more traditional ways of working towards these kinds of approaches can work and when it can be really difficult. Because I think it's easy for us because we're already thinking these kinds of things and we're starting up something new. But is it possible to transition and when? question with a small answer. Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, it's happening all the time now. Um, what I see is there are uh, different strategies on, on, on this transition. Um, I think one of the things which make it quite complicated is that um, the, you see in a lot of organizations you see different, different paradigms together. So you see the, some of the people want to keep the old principles of part of the old principles um, and introducing step-by-step -step new principles. I don't think that works. So I, I, I think you need uh, a choice for, or, or uh, choosing for a new paradigm with the principles and the strategy or keep it to the old one. I, there was um, in Holland one of the organizations who was seen as an example in this transition um, at the end got bankrupt because they really didn't choose. They had the old hierarchical structure. So that, for example, what they did was sending the nurses to a management training. So they wanted, they wanted to reduce the amount of management layers. And to compensate, they said that, that we need another way of controlling. No, we don't need controlling. So that would be my answer. <laughs> So, and, and there was another organization at the same time which was supported by us uh, in this transition. And the, the CEO um, of this organization made a radical choice. He said, we're going to do it, we're going to try to do it exactly as you did it, and would you like to support us? So it was our competitor in the same town I'm living. They said, okay, then we need to have a coffee every Saturday morning and discuss the things which are going on, and you just, you just hire me when you think you need me. So we went to the board, we went to the teams, we went to the management team, and, and they came to visit us um, in, at the head office and, and saw how things were working. And within one and a half year, <coughs> they made a complete transition. It was an organization with 4,000 employees. And instead of uh, being quite low in the benchmarks nationally, they became one of the best in Holland in a few years' time. Uh, tomorrow they will be on television because they are a very good example of high quality in, uh, also in nursing homes. So I think it's, it needs, from my opinion, it needs a radical choice. Um, and, and another important thing is that um, the one who is executing it should have the right behavior. So if, you, if, the, if the language and the things you're saying is different than what you're doing, then people won't believe you. It's not, the credibility will be very low. So you see a lot of people, people in positions who did, who did it for a long time and worked in a certain way. It's quite difficult to change. So, so that's one of the questions. My experience is that uh, it's much easier for women than for men. So that doesn't need any explanation, I think. I смятам, че много по-лесно се започва на чисто. Ако съберете нова компания и започнете, много лесно хората, които ще присъедините, ще разберат новите ви идеи. Ако обаче компанията години наред е работила по даден начин, да направите преход е доста трудно, защо хората се страхуват от промени. Особено ако нещата вървят, никой няма да разбере защо трябва да променете каквото и да било. И колкото и хубави неща да им описват, и те се оглеждат, виждат, че всичко се е наред и не могат да променят какво искат изобщо да направите. Затова най-удачният момент за промени е, когато нещата станат зле. Във връзка с това бих ви посъветвал да влушите малко нещата, преди да тръгнете да ги оправите. 
Също така бих добавил, че колкото по-властни с хората в компанията, определени хора, менеджери, ако тръгнете да правите промени, толкова по-голяма власт и сила ще имате срещу, като противници, като резистанс на промените, които искате да направите. А, така че съпротивът за промени винаги ще срещнете и може би трябва да приемете, че с старите менеджери трудно може да направите нови промени. Разбира се, винаги ще има изключения, но те не са правилото. Аз отговарям тук правилото какво ще бъде. I have a question to both of the gentlemen here. First for Mr. De Block. I have the impression that it's very easy to be implemented in the sphere of healthcare where originally you are not expecting to have profits. I mean, definitely non-profit organizations are typical kind of organization in, in this kind of business everywhere in the world. And the second thing is that uh, maybe it's very also, how to say, facilitated by the fact that There's uh, very well-developed communities in Holland, in Brussels, in um, the area of, uh, uh, as well, in Belgium as well. Do you think that uh, having in mind your geographical diversification, then uh, you have uh, more difficulties to, to have the same business in countries where the communities are not so well-developed? There's no, how to say, uh, check and controls made by my, the communities themselves over the qualities, over the, the activities of the business. And uh, the следващия въпрос, който на вас специално исках да ви попитам е, загубихте ли някакви части от менеджерски си, ценния си менеджерски став, като резултат от тази промяна? Okay, the first question, um, I've, I've worked in a lot of countries and um, with different histories, so For example, working in China, and in China they have a, um, not a very long history on community health care, uh, but I see that as an advantage. So you see that there are not so many protocols rules for, in the system yet. So there is more, uh, more space to experiment. Um, there is a very strong community thinking. So we use principles of the community thinking in our way of organizing. So, uh, so I, we, we are even doing some projects in Africa. Um, and I try to, um, to see the principles we are using in, in, in healthcare uh, as generic principles. They, they are based on the World Health Organization and on primary healthcare. And they're very helpful in every system, every country. So I, what I try to do is start always with um, the, the people who need support, who need care, and translate it to what's possible within the system as it is. So, and, and the principles can stay the same. Of course, if you look come to the organizational principles, then there are big differences we see in Japan, for example, with a long history of very hierarchical um, structures that it needs quite a time, long time, to explain how it works. But I was surprised how they almost copied the way we were working. So there are now teams in Tokyo who are quite the same as in Holland. So, so it, it's, and for me, it's just a journey, and we have an, an open mind. It doesn't have to. Uh, be this or that, we just, with the people we are working with, we say what's the best possible way to use the principles. And then we'll see. That's what, okay, is that a satisfying answer? I will repeat the question, I'm sure that I will get it right. Did I lose part of the value management that I had before? The answer is yes. The mistake was that I didn't lose it on the first time, but I lost it even more soon. Hi, um, I have several questions, so excuse me for having many, and feel free to address the ones that you'd like to address. Uh, so the first one, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first one relates to the last question that we heard. It is about the people. 
does it take a special kind of people? And I know you addressed it, you know, in different ways and seem to say that if you put them in the right culture, it doesn't really matter who the people are. Still, are there any aspects of the values of the people you engage in such organizations or how you support them to develop the mindsets that are absolutely critical to have the kind of organization that you is describing and the kind of organization that Demeter is aspiring to? Um, the second question relates to, you know, communities and that desire to take up the responsibility and use the freedom or not. Uh, any tips on how to work with communities that are not, that are actually afraid to have freedom? Uh, I, along with several colleagues here working in education sector in Bulgaria, know that there is a lot of desire from very, like from certain groups and people to allow for more freedom in our educational system. And there's been legislation that has tried to provide more freedom, but we've seen a lot of pushback from the establishment, hundreds of thousands of people who just don't believe that this freedom will be helpful to them, to their work in schools. And this is a nonprofit kind of sector, and even there, it's extremely hard to create this kind of mindset. Uh, and the third question is very practical, related to IT. You've talked about this use as a key component. Could you speak a little bit more to what IT has enabled for you and what are the critical aspects of your work that it is making possible? Thank you. So, uh, the first question, you all already answered it, I think, yourself. Um, I think it's more the, the view, what's the, uh, it's, it's more the, uh, the view on, on, on people the, the, and your world view which influences um, what you think that people can do. Uh, for example, I have, I have colleagues, uh, other CEOs and organizations who said, you are lucky because you have all the people who can do it. I have this nurses who can't work for themselves. But it's his problem that he's looking at the world this way. So if you think that people can't do it, they won't do it because you create circumstances that enables, that doesn't enable them to, to do this. Um, of course, I think people need to be motivated, but as I said before, uh, when you create a context which um, appeals uh, or, or asks for responsibility, people will behave responsible. They don't get certain trainings. They come from other organizations where they have have a management structure, and within a week, within two weeks, it's normal. So they said, uh, usually they say, uh, we, we don't know why we accepted it for so long, that we are dominated by a lot of people who don't know what we are doing. Um, if you look at schools and this, the education system, I think in a lot of countries, it's a very rigid uh, system. So. Um, I have three sons, and they all three of them, uh, uh, non, non three of them did finish their school normally, in a normal way. But they learned a lot, not being at school. So, um, <laughs> if, yes, <laughs> if I see them now, they speak different languages, they live in different places in the world, uh, and they can handle uh, all kinds of different situations. So they are very good skilled in handling, for example, the school system. Um, if, if I look at the discussions we have in Holland, it's quite the same. So how can we create a breakthrough that teachers can focus more on different ways of teaching the students? Uh, and and, what's, and what we see is that the, um, the experiments which are the most um, I think hopeful ex experiments uh, are led by uh, people who break through the systems. So they, they just say, I don't mind if I get uh, punished by the inspection. I want to show that it's better to deal with students this way than we are doing. Um, and there's a lot of discussion and even the Minister of Education, which was the <laughs> Minister of Health, she organized a meeting, she said, can you do this also for education? But she's struggling herself with her own people at the ministry who are used to write these policy notes and, and they're focusing on all these indicators and all this, um, and, and where they measure what is good education. 
So I think what, what should be the message for you is just to go on and create your own schools, for example. So I try to find ways, um, not only to fight the system, but also to show the system that there are better alternatives. And it takes, if, if you see it in a perspective of 10 years, then you can make step by step, you can uh, create experimental environments, I think. And, and I think what would be good is that you send your Minister of Education to our Minister of Education. And then we have a meeting together, and then we can say, okay, let's start a Bulgarian-Dutch experiment. Okay. That's an invitation. That's an invitation. <laughs> we are taking it. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. What about the other question oh, about the communities? The how to engage communities who, for some reason, don't want to be engaged don't, or resisting engagement? If they don't want to be engaged, don't waste any time <laughs> on it. So, put your efforts on people who want to change. Don't waste time on people who don't want. It's 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 taking a lot of energy. <laughs> and it's, you come home frustrated that it didn't work again. So just put your energy on the people who want to work on it, and you will find a lot of people who will support your idea. Okay, the last question, would you like to repeat it? And oh, the role of IT. Um, yes, but we, but we said is a lot of things are about um, information, communication, um, knowledge. So we said, how can we use IT in a way that it's um, um, supporting the, the, the information streams, if you can say it, and, and knowledge um, and, and, and the necessary, if, if it can reduce the necessary bureaucracy and if it can focus more on, on knowledge, knowledge sharing and bring the information at the right spot at the right moment, then uh, we can reduce the overhead because it, we can, um, it can just be handled by the IT. Um, and and we, we, what we try to do is to integrate everything. So we have just one integrated system, but um, the, the nurses just um, use it on their iPads. They fill in the time and the things they are doing. And it's used for uh, the salaries, for the financial administration, for the billing, and so on. So we try to avoid all kinds of different applications and we said we build one integral system which takes care for everything. But it's, and it, it saves 50% of the costs on IT. So that was also a, a nice uh, thing that came with it. Um, okay, we have around time for one more question. I will just first give the mic to Damian if he wants to add something to your questions and then one more last question. На бързо искам да добавя нещо. На първо място идеята да накарате някой да прави нещо, което той не иска, принципно противоречи на концепцията за свободата. Няма как да насила да накарате някой да бъде свободен. А на второ място в България има едно демократично училище, чувал съм за него. Там се опитват хората по такъв свободен начин, в който родители, деца и изобщо всички на куп гласуват разни неща. Преди известно време се срещнах с тези хора, те бяха доста объркани. <laughs> Това, което все още им липсваше е да си въведат правила, които да уважават, да спазват, сами да променят какво точно искат да постигнат. Не знам дали не още са объркани. Те са много симпатични хора и аз съм сигурен, че ако продължат да опорстват, ще стигнат далеч. Но демокрацията се развива малко бавно като цяло, като концепция, отнема време и трябва търпение. Това от една страна. По отношение на първия въпрос, той прилича като въпроса кое е първото, яйцето или кокошката. И аз бих отговорил така. Той е Маркс, мисля, отговорил на този въпрос. Битието определя съзнанието. Ако поставите хора в различна среда, хората почват да се променят. Така че, ако, ако не сте окей okay с хората, такива каквито са, просто сменете средата и ще видите, че хората ще станат различни. И не е въпрос на това дали са подбрани правилните хора, защото повечето от хората са правилни. Просто средата им е била неподходяща. Последен въпрос. Окей. Хай, ай хава question to both of you. Uh, could you tell me how do you measure outcomes 
I mean the outcome of the work of each individual employee at your organization. It's very interesting to me to know this. What's the reason? I, um, now we had to we had a lot, we, in the beginning we had discussions about um, should we should we measure the results of every employee? We we, we focus on on uh, the teamwork. So we said um, everybody in the team is responsible for um, um, taking part in 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 everything and results, but they have to choose themselves how they divide roles and, and these roles influence the, um, uh, for example, the productivity of every, every person. So, so we don't take the results, uh, we, can't, we can see what the results are, but we don't uh, have any consequences on, on that. So we, we say that the team effort is, is leading to the results of the team and, and we measure the team results like the productivity are also the outcome for patients um, and also the satisfaction on how they, they uh, experience the working together. These are the three main things we, we mentioned. They're also part in this team compass that I mentioned. But I, um, the, uh, for example, the bonus is, is only based on the years people are working, not on their results. So we say that that makes it too complicated to do all these things. От каква ведахме тази система при нас демократичната, за мен стана много просто измерването на личния резултат на всеки, защото вече не се занимавам с него. Това по същество представлява вече задача на самия екип. Екипа решава по какви правила и по какви критерии ще се мери резултата на отделния индивид, в резултат на което в различните екипи има съвсем различни системи за измерване. Аз не смятам, че една система е по-добра от друга. И хората доста разумно от моя гледна точка сами преценяват как да се измерва резултата. Но още веднъж те са различни в различните екипи. И се приемат с гласуване с две трети мнозинство. Благодаря на всички. Кафе паузата е 20 минути отвън. Благодаря на всички и на нашите лектори. Благодаря.